ben de yardımınızda diyorum. Hi. I may be power company. Swear by the almighty God. Swear by the almighty God. That the evidence I shall give before this committee that the evidence I shall give before this committee touching the matter in issue touching the matter in issue shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God so help me God Honorable Mabel Howard Kumsi this is your third term as a member of parliament. You have previously been a minister of state in charge of presidential special initiative, which other committees did you serve on in parliament? Mr. Chairman, I think I didn't hear you very well. Which committees were you on in, in, in the sixth and seventh parliaments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I served on Lands and Natural Resource Committee, Gender Committee, and Business Committee of the House. Well, is there any other thing you wish to tell us about yourself? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe it's how I come sing. MP for Aoutu Senior East from 2013 to date. Mr. Chairman, I was born in the year 20, in the year 1966, on the 3rd of February, in Second D. I'm a native of Salaga, a married woman with three children. Mr. Chairman, I'm also a teacher by profession. I taught for 21 years before entry into parliament in 2013. I have since served the people of Aoutu Senior East, as I mentioned, since 20. 13 to date. I was also made the Minister for Special Development Initiatives in the previous government under His Excellency Nana Dodan from 2017 to the 6th of January 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yeah, another member for Mushegu. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Hawakum Singh, you are welcome to this committee. I want to congratulate you on your nomination as a Minister for Fisheries and Natural Culture. And in the run up to the 2020 elections, during the voter registration exercise, and I believe on the day of the election, there were some recorded shooting incidents on those occasions in which your name was mentioned. Some interviews were granted, and some civil society organizations took issue with your involvement in those incidents. Now, I'm not too sure the story has been told fully. I want you to take this opportunity to tell this committee what really happened on that day, on those occasions, during the voter registration on the day of the election. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, during the registration of voters 
in the year 2020, on the June 20th, there was such incident. And Mr. Chairman, regrettable. Chairman, I just, you said June. Is it June or July? July, July. All right, thank you. Thank you. It was unfortunate incident, Mr. Chairman, which I wish it never happened on that day. And I don't also pray that it ever happens again in the history of our politics in Ghana. Mr. Chairman, I want to take this opportunity to also apologize to the people who were so scared on that day. It was in defense of myself because I felt my life was in danger, the circumstances that I found myself. That day, I thought I needed to have saved my life by defending my life there. But Mr. Chairman, I also want to plead with this committee that the issue is before the police for investigation. I wouldn't want to say much about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, let's uh, follow up uh, to honorable Tam police question. You have a bodyguard as Minister MP who was with you that day. Is that the case? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I have a bodyguard. But that day, the bodyguard was not with me because it was as early as 6 a.m. She had done, then not reported for duty. Thank you. Yeah, I can understand, Chairman, I can understand that the matter is being investigated by the police, but call it the famous or infamous Rambo style Hawaiian shooting, uh, which happened. You want to say you are apologizing, assuming it has resulted in loss of life. Will an apology be enough to compensate for a person out of that act, which in my view was not only dishonorable but unministerial? You think that a minister should just uh, take a gun and start shooting? Is that, should that be the conduct of a person occupying the high office of minister? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, please. But as I earlier all said, it was the circumstances that I found myself. And th 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 that led me to it. And as I said, it's still under the police investigation. And I really regret that day, which I wish it never happens in the life of our yeah. political activities. So, Chairman, in this room, if the Honorable Howard Kumsen feels unsafe, I will say when the circumstance may require you to return fire. Did you need to do that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I earlier on said, it was the circumstance that pushed me to do that. And I'm as you still can be waxing the theory of circumstance, but you see there are electoral rules. Polling station conduct is governed by law. If you have grievances, there are in our laws provisions for the management of those grievances. So whatever the circumstance must be, you have sworn an oath to uphold the constitution and the laws of Ghana, including those electoral laws, which is what should provide you cover that if you felt dissatisfied about anything, not to go to uh, reduce it to a jungle war warfare, pardon my word. Why did you do that? What circumstance could have provoked you to that level? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will also want to put on record that yes, there was a name of a pooling station there, but it did not happen at the pooling station. It happened outside the polling center, about 150 meters away that it happened. And I still say I regret for that. It's under investigation. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Your, my follow-up questions have more or less, you know, been answered in your in your answer to the extent that I was going to ask whether, with the benefit of hindsight, if the circumstances played out again as it did on that day, would your reaction be the same as it was on those occasions? Thank you very much, John. No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. How you done? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just want to understand. Now, some said in relation to those incidents that you didn't fire the weapon, that somebody else fired, that you did not personally fire any firearm, and that they put it in code that a gangster fired the weapon, but you decided to take one for your team. Is that correct? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Much. Chairman. As I said, the case is under investigation. So I will plead if it can, if I can be excused, since I don't want to say much into it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, it is estimated that Ghanaians consume over 1 million metric tons of fish annually. And production of fish in Ghana covers around 400,000 metric tons, indicating a huge gap between production and consumption of fish in Ghana. How do you propose to address this situation? Mr. Chairman, I don't know whether I have hearing problem. I'm not getting the sound very well. So if you can, would you ask the question? Okay, let me repeat for you. I said Ghanaians consume over 1 million metric tons of fish annually. Our production is around 400,000 metric tons in Ghana, indicating that we have a huge gap between consumption of fish in Ghana and production. How do you propose to address the situation, to close the gap? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As the Honorable Member rightly mentioned, Mr. Chairman, the population that consumes the animal protein, fish, are more than what we are able to get from the fishing. When given the nod, I know my predecessor started some aquaculture project. That is aquaculture used for youth in, in, in jobs, with, uh, youth in creating jobs. And I think when we introduce, we, we enhance, it's used in a youth aquaculture, youth in aquaculture and jobs. Yeah. Youth in aquaculture and jobs. Mr. Chairman, when we enhance the aquaculture sector, it will increase the production of fish for consumption in the country. Now my second question. You know Ghana is the fourth largest producer of tuna in the world and the first in the whole of Africa. But the tuna sector is being confronted with a lot of challenges. Tuna alone rakes in an average of $350 million annually. $350 million. But the pole and line tuna 
a seriously challenged. To be able to catch more tuna, the pole and line method use what is called anchovies. This is what we describe as the cater schoolboys, as a bait, to be able to get the tuna. And to be able to catch the bait, the anchovies, they have to use light. I know there's a law that criminalizes the use of light to cut fish in this country. Because of this, that sector is verging on collapse. As you speak, out of 20 pole and line vessels, only five of them are active. So there is the immediate need, the urgent need, for us to bring back that business, to be able to rake in more dollars and, I mean, stabilize the, 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 the extreme rate. What do you think must be done to be able to revive the pole and line subsector? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When you give it the law, the, the, the nod, I think we'll have to enforce the laws on fishing in this country. As you rightly mentioned, when they use lighting system, it's, it's, it's unauthorized way of fishing. And so since it is in the law, we're going to enforce on the laws. Thank you. Honorable, okay. The enforcement of the law is your responsibility. You have to do it. It's saying that as we enforce this law, one other part of fishing is collapsing, tuna fishing. Do you have any agenda to increase or approve or improve tuna fishing? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of what I know is uh, the pressure on the fishing fleet is so high. And so we have to look at how we're going to manage it. And also, we also, we also, like I said, to enforce, enforce the law on the, on the fishing, because they, 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 they need to, we need to make sure that the right equipment are used for the fishing. And when the rights of equipment are being used, at the right time, and we also introduce, we also introduce the closed season for the fishing uh, uh, industry. It will increase the tuna for us. You said we have to use the right accoutrements, implements. Specifically, what implements are you talking about when you say right implements? Come again. In your answer, you said we have to use the right tools. What specific tools are you talking about? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll talk about the fishing gears. The fishing gears. Yeah. It's one of the fishing tools. Yes, we have one. Mr. Chairman, there is a worrisome development in the fisheries sector that must be dealt with forthwith. It's about plastics in our fisheries resources, plastics. Now, when the fishers cast the nets, in anticipation of harvesting fish, they end up harvesting 85%. The total harvest that they will have, 85% will be plastics. And this is seriously affecting our resources. How would you tackle this menace? of plastics in our fisheries resources. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it all goes to our environment, how to keep the environment clean. So in collaboration with the stakeholders at the fishing community, 
and in consultation with the sanitation ministry and the relevant agencies, we will discuss how to get rid of these plastics in our seas. And also, as I earlier on mentioned, we will also encourage the fishermen to use the right gears for the fishing. That is not supposed to maybe bring in these plastics out from the sea when they go for the fishing. When they use the right fishing gear, it's likely to save them from getting the, 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 uh, the, the plastics. What is the per capita consumption of fish in Ghana? Honorable <laughs> per capita, how many kilos per in, if any individual consumes? Uh, he, 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 he eats, he eats, he eats bush meat, so you can count him out. Yeah. <laughs> Every Ghanaian consumes 23 kilograms a year. That is the per capita consumption. So, Mr. Speaker, once you have not... <laughs> you, you have had points sufficient. You chose to answer that yourself. Yes. Any, all right. Um, Honorable Agaga. Thank you. Honorable Nominee, let me take you back to the infamous shooting incident that you have fully taken responsibility for. Now, the weapon you fired, was it your own weapon? If yes, um, did you license it lawfully? And if so, are you willing to furnish us with a copy of the license? Says who? Hello, these are. Uh, says who? Please, you didn't speak to the mic, so you can't respond to something that is not spoken to the mic. Honorable, what's your license, your gun license? That's all we need to know. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the gun is mine and is duly licensed. Thank you. Yeah. Second leg of the question is, are you willing to furnish us with a copy of the license? What will you do with that? The police is investigating that. They will need it. Ask another question, please. The now defunct ministry of which you were minister superintended over the development authorities, but my focus is on the Northern Development Authority. Are you able to tell this committee how the Northern Development Authority rolled out development projects in the various constituencies that uh, comes under its jurisdiction, what criteria did they use to rule out their activities in the various constituencies? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, prior to the operationalization of the development authorities, when the Ministry of Special Government Initiative took over, we did needs assessment throughout the country, which was handed over to the development authorities. So based on that, and in collaboration with the MMDC, that they did those development of the project in every 
constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the needs assessments that were done clearly was incorporated in the medium term expenditure framework of your ministry, which was duly presented to this House for approval. Is that correct? The needs assessment you just alluded to formed part of your medium expenditure framework 2020 to 2023, which was presented to this House and duly approved. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So it would be out of place for parliamentary candidates to lay claims as having lobbied for development projects undertaken by the development now, authorities. Now, ask, ask another question, man. What the parliamentary candidate says or does not say. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I have a specific question that I want to Ask out. that question, but what a parliamentary candidate says or does not say has nothing to do with her. Oh, you're asking what? her it is out of place for a parliamentary candidate to lay. That's asking her opinion of what, whether she thinks it's right or not. That's not that. Oh, Mr. Speaker, am I entitled to make a specific reference and put it to her because she was the minister with, I mean, um, oversight responsibility over the Say development that authority. she made a claim like that, if it's not her, but somebody else, then she can't answer for what somebody else said. If she said that, put it to her. But can I, can I, can I suggest it to her, if it ever came to her notice, what action she must have taken you, would be a legitimate ask. question. If it's admissible, I will allow it. Very well. Now, honorable nominee, I'd like to refer you to a publication which appeared on Ghana Web on the 9th April 2020, and it was reported that Mr. David, and I'm quoting, said Dema, an MPP parliamentary candidate for the Bole Bamboy constituency, cut sword for the construction of market stores three unit class blocks, and a clinic with funding from the Northern Development Authority. Did this matter come to your attention? No, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Thank you very much. Um, congratulations, Minister. Minister, um, I'm sure You've been briefed on the coastline of Ghana that we have about 550 kilometers of coastline from a flower area to a lobo. Um, the president started this program of building a lot of fish landing ports under the Ministry of Transport with the support and collaboration of the fisheries ministry. It's a laudable project. I know of the one at Winneba, Mountford, Axim, Deshi, Ododio, Jamestown. What is your brief on this project? And how are you going to collaborate with the transport minister to ensure that a hardworking fisher folk um, get the required benefits from these ports that government is thinking so much in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I heard you right, I think it's a laudable idea, and I'm going to continue with the initiative. Thank you. Secondly, Minister, uh, those of us in the middle belt, we hear a lot about premix issues. Uh, there's a committee and a lot of fishermen will be talking, granting interviews. It's always an unending saga with premix. Uh, 
evolution of committees, shortage of committees, uh, premix and landing sites. It's, it's, it's sometimes disturbing. What is the real issue with premix issue? And what can you do to, to solve some of the age-old problems associated with its distribution and any other problem? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we've heard a lot about the issues of uh, premise rural fishermen. The right people are not getting it, or is being diverted one way or the other. And Mr. Chairman, I know very well that improving on the vice president in collaboration with the fisheries commission and the former minister have tracked the vehicles for the distribution of the free will. Mr. Chairman, when I get the note, I'm going to take it from there and make sure that this premise will be available for all fishermen at the fishing site to do their fishing. And I will also introduce some other measures that will help to mitigate the shortage of uh, premise free world. Thank you. Yes, um, I don't know Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to stand up for the honorable nominee. Honorable nominee, what is fish farming? What, what is fish farming? And what are some of the advantages of fish farming? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will try my best. Fish farming is the process of rearing of fish in the <laughs> reservoirs and the fish ponds, etc. Thank you. And some advantages. I think OBM was just disturbing. What are some advantages of a fish farming? Honorable Member, please, I said, what are the advantages of fish farming? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One advantage of uh, fish farming is it makes the farmer earn some income. It also increases fish in our community for consumption. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I think we are here to work as police, as police. But the honorable nominee perfectly answered the question. So what, what, what is, what is all can I have, this? Can I have some order, please? Honorable, oh. he please has a question. Oh. Can I have some order, please? Mr. Chairman. Under the... You are speaking under from there honorable, as well. Shall we, uh, can we go? Can I have some order, please? Honorable Chairman, when Honorable Sherry Aite was minister for the sector that you are going, when approved, a number of posters were built across the region. All of these, a number of post stores, post stores, all of these are now white elephants. What will you do about them? For instance, you go to Jamestown, Cape Coast, Aizim, and Longford and so on. What will you do about them? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Mr. Chairman, when giving the nod, I will find out what exactly the problems are with the coastals, and we will revive them accordingly. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, in the 2016 manifesto of MPP, the government promised $1 million per constituency. The Honorable Nominee, in 29th November 2019, said that all 275 constituencies have received $1 million uh, each. Can you tell this committee how much from that promise did each constituency receive by the end of 2020? And what they use it for in those countries? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I got too well, was it for only 2029 to 2020? You said that in 2019. It was 2019 when you said all 275 have received $1 million. That's what I want to find out from you. By the end of 2020, how much of that promise did each constituency receive? And what was it used for? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not very sure I said they have received $1 million per constituency. It's a budget, a location. So as and when the projects are being executed, then the money is being paid. But honestly, Mr. Chairman, it will be very difficult for me to tell because we have the development authorities. And as I mentioned earlier on, that we did needs assessment from the beginning. And based on the needs assessment, they still review it. They still review it in collaboration with the stakeholders and the MMDCs to know the exact project that they need at that particular time. So I cannot pinpoint exactly what projects were used, the money was used for in the constituencies. If I go to one, well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I just want the Congratulations, Honorable Nominee. The Fisheries Act mandates the minister responsible for fisheries and aquaculture to declare open and closed fishing season uh, to conserve marine species. However, we know the difficulties in trying to enforce this open and closed season. As a minister, what are you going to do to ensure we are able to execute the mandate in the act. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, when giving the nod, I will continue with what my predecessor started in collaboration with the fishermen to do a lot of consultation before we can reintroduce them. Chairman, the nominee keeps saying fishermen. Are there no women in the industry? <laughs> Do you know any fisherwomen yourself? Maybe use fisher folk <laughs> to protect yourself because it's not just men. There are women whose livelihood depend on fisheries and related aquaculture matters. Thank you, Chairman. John, are you done? Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Directly following the minority leader's question, what policy directions or policy plans do you have to improve the lot of women in the fishing industry?
what policy plans do you have to improve the lot of women in the fishing industry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Looking at the fishing industry, I believe there are lots of women in that ship. And first of all, as I will do consultation with them, you have we'll said also empower there's a, a lot of women in that chain. Where are the women in the chain? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, right from the coast to the market. That is the selling part. Is that right? The marketing part is where the women are. Yes, please. So that's where your policy direction will be, I suspect. Sorry? So that's where your policy direction will be, that the question is asking. Yes, please. So how will you help the women in the marketing of the uh, fish? By empowering them, Mr. Chairman. I know that you do more for them in terms of loans and stuff once you are giving them out. In terms of credit facilities, among others. Okay. So my next question. What is your take on Maori culture and how do you intend pursuing that? Maori culture. What is your take on Maori culture and how do you intend pursuing that? Honorable, I think we are confused. Is it marine culture or marine culture? No, the correct one is marine culture or marine farming. So you can either say marine culture or marine farming. It's the same thing, but not marine culture. Marine culture or marine farming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My plan is to enhance the sector by improving their way of the farming, increasing of the fishing fleet, introducing the close season for them to get more catch. If I'm right, I don't know, but I didn't get your, your question very well. You're done, okay, very well. Hey, is that all we Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Honorable nominees, um, I'm taking you back to the shooting incident. And I'm taking you back because it is a matter of serious public interest. Uh, in the wake of the shooting incident, the Ghana Bar Association issued a statement. And in their statement, uh, they said, it is regrettable that the suspects in one instance include a minister who is also a lawmaker. And Based on the same shooting, the Ghana Peace Council on July 21st, 2020, actually called for your resignation as a Minister of State. Now, the question that I would want to ask is that when you appeared before the vetting committee on the 10th of February, 2017, to be considered as Minister, among other things, you promised to champion youth development. However, you have earned titles such as Kaswa Van Dam, Robocop, Chuck Norris, which honorable, have resulted honorable, in... Honorable to... No, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, these are the hello, hello. popular who, perceptions who, I'm making reference to. Who gave him those titles? No, my lord, uh, don't, please. Those are 
Those are not acceptable on the floor of the house. Right. What, well, nickname, what nicknames each of us have if we use them here? Well, so please ask your question. Well, Mr. Chair, so my, my question is that what measures have you put in place since becoming a champion for youth development in Ghana other than the perception of violence? Alabamba, are you a champion of youth in Ghana? Mr. Chair, that is what he said in the Hansa, and I can refer to the Hansa. He says she will champion youth issues. That will make her a champion of youth development. Well, Mr. Chairman, so I wanted to tell the committee what she did to champion the cause of youth in Ghana. Yes, please answer. What did you do to assist the youth in the country? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Assisting the youth in the country, I used my office, my previous office, in getting work for the youth. One, through the construction that were done in various constituencies. They, it created jobs for them to be engaged in, in various ways. Honorable nominee, I believe that if we follow up, yes, can we hold on? Yes. Um, the honorable member had used titles, unfortunate titles, on the nominee, and I, I seek I your out ruled. A rule that and it should be expunged yeah. from the records. They will be. Thank you. Please continue. Honorable Minister of State is a very, very high office, and people will be demanding high standards from you. How genuine is your apology uh, covering the gun shooting that you just did before this committee? Honorable Member, what, what do you, when you say how genuine, what do you, what do you mean? So Mr. Chair, I'm sure the nominee understands the question because Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, at, at least the apology must come with some commitment not to repeat that. those things again. Do we have it? Sorry. Yeah, mine, please. When you say how the new, are you going to measure or to ask a clear question, a question that is answerable? When you say how genuine, I don't see how you measure genuineness or otherwise. Very well, Mr. Chair, I, I, I believe that it was an added opportunity for the nominee to tell Ghanaians and to reassure Ghanaians that she is committed to the, uh, to the apologies that she made before the committee and that she is genuine about it. Yes, Honorable, they want to reassure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I assure the committee that it's genuine. Thank you. Well, the third question is that, will you say that the Akufuado administration has achieved this vision of one village, one dam, one constituency, one million dollars, and the objectives of the three development authorities you were responsible for as a minister for special development initiatives? Yes. Thank you for the correction. Honourable Member, please answer the question. Ignore their sides, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If the question can be taken again. One, to repeat the question, I'm saying that you were the Minister for Special Development Initiatives. Would you see that your government 
achieved the objectives of one village, one dam, one constituency, one million dollars? No, no, but that's the question. You, you want me to, I just power please. Yes. Yes, please. Did your government achieve those objectives? Your answer, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. We achieved the objective of the ministry. Thank so you. every village has one dam now in Ghana. Every constituency had your one million dollars. Honorable, please, you're done. You're done. Yes. Now you may ask your question. You, yes, you may ask your question. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, honorable nominee, um, I'll also take you back to uh, the first question that you answered. You indicated that the matter is under investigation. There are a number of issues, though, that come up. Um, because I have read about two uh, incidents of gunshots, one during the registration and the other during the elections. Um, which of them are you claiming responsibility for? And given your repeated assertion that this matter is under investigation, what would you say? Uh, to the committee if it is decided that a decision on your nomination be deferred until investigations into this matter know, is that's, that's not a question to ask her. The first question, can you repeat what she asked? She will answer. Is that you asked her whether there were two there were two shootings, which one is she taking responsibility for? Yes, Mr. Chairman, and I'm asking if she thinks that it will be fair for this committee to defer a decision on her nomination until the investigation is over. Can they leave that to the committee? Yes, Honorable. He said there were, he said there were two shooting incidents. Which one? Uh, first, were there two shooting incidents? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In my answering this I mentioned that the incident on the 20th of July, 2020. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Honorable nominee, in relation to your former role as minister responsible for special initiatives, um, I want you to address a number of issues relating to um, procurement breaches and reported or alleged theft. One has to do with some tricycles that got missing, for which the CEO of the Northern Development Authority had to write to the Ghana police to carry out an investigation into the missing tricycles. So you know, add the name and then the reference letter of the late uh, Thank letter, you. please. Thank you. Um, I have here letter dated um, 12 December 2019, CEO uh, Northern Development Authority, uh, A.M. Haroon, acting CEO actually, A.M. Haroon, uh, writing to the Ghana Police Service, Divisional Commander Lama Shegu Seki, Tamale, to carry out, the letter is report on tricycle distribution. And then in this report, a request is made to the police commander to carry out investigation. I also have a reply of the uh, Superintendent Regional Crime Officer, K. Otua Champo, to the uh, CEO, uh, of the NDA at the time. And again, I have copies of letters here that I will share with you and the committee where 
the new CEO wrote to contractors demanding to increase uh, contract signs and bid by 5% because the party needed some funds. And the letter I will share with you is 12 March 2020. So clarity, letter from... The letter from the NBA. To who? To um, a number of contractors. This one is, uh, the, the reference number is NBA IP, IPEP. 03501816, uh, signed by the new CEO, Dr. Al Hassan Suleiman Anam Zoya, and the authority stamp is there, and it reads I write to inform you of management decision to charge contractors and suppliers executing IPEP projects extra fees of 5% of the contract sum to help the party in the upcoming general elections. Any contractor who fails to pay this fees will lose his or her contract. Furthermore, any contractor or supplier on his or her own volition pay for extra charges to the consultants only on their own request to perform any extra activity for them and be paid for accordingly. This must not be seen as part of NDA IPEP charges. We will count on your you usual cooperation and support. It's a letter I I have just requested for it to be. First, let's check. Yes, was and then I also to her. First, was it addressed to her? Was the letter addressed to her? Mr. Chairman, no. Wait, wait. I just want to be sure. Before, was the letter addressed to her or her office? Mr. Chairman, the authorities operate under her ministry hold, hold supervision. It, chairman, with your indulgence. I think what With all due respect. Hold, hold it. Let me get Chairman's indulgence. You are holding her responsible as supervising minister for the Northern Can Development Authority. First, do. First, we want to know, you said the letter was written by somebody. It was addressed to who? The CEO. It was addressed to who? I said this was addressed to contractors who were executing contracts under the IPEP program. Very well. well and um, I would just want Mr. to Chairman, I'm not done. There are, more letters, there are more letters related to this Don't one. worry. If they came, if we were addressed to her, then it means that she is, must have received it. If it is not addressed to her, I want to find out whether she's aware before you follow up with your questions on that. Right? They, you have said they are not addressed to her. They address to contractors. I know, are you aware that your is it was CEO of what? Not in development. Not in development. They was writing such letters to contractors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any idea of such letter. So, Chairman, should it be brought to your attention? And I will be glad if my brother can give me the copies of the letter yes. so I can follow on. What will you follow up with? Will you investigate those matters? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since I'm no more at that ministry, I will forward it to the appropriate quarters for investigation. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Shane, if you want to follow up any questions on that, you may. Mr. Chairman. I take note that you asked my question for me. I only referred to the letters, and then you moved on to ask her if she's aware. That perhaps because that was you're reading the question. content of the letter that is not addressed to her. So first, I want Mr. to make sure that perhaps she If you had allowed me to finish and ask my question. No, I am responsible for ensuring what is admissible and what is not admissible. That is what I'm trying to do. So, Mr. Chairman, are the letters admissible? Depends on what questions you ask on her. That's why I asked her if she's aware. Mr. Chairman, I'm aware, saying I have not asked a question. You asked the question. Um, if the letters are admissible, I was just going through the letters. First, the first thing is that what you call letters are not before me. They are not here. 
you're seeking to ask questions of the person, content of the letter. I wanted to be sure that she, was she the recipient? No. Is she aware? If not, you don't waste our time asking questions. Oh, Jama, Jama, you move away, you don't waste our time. It's not acceptable. That's not your deference to you. No, if we are but asking you can't use that word. No, you can't use that word. You don't you waste don't our waste time. Our I mean, they say, I say we. No, no, we, but we don't waste too our strong, time too strong on matters which are not admissible. No, no, no. Please. And then allow him to learn. Then you then make a determination. It's not due difference, you leader. I'm, I'm regulating this with you. No, but oh, you, you so regulate it well. I know, let's but not, he, not he says he hasn't it. asked the question. He's just giving the narrative. That narrative. So, if so in it, be concluding with your narrative and ask your question. Thank you. I, I, I am guided, Mr. Chama. Thank you. So, um, I have here purchase of contract documents by contractors and suppliers, 12 March 2020, uh, written on the letterhead of the Northern Development Authority and uh, uh, copied to consultants, copied to the Deputy Chief Executive Officer and then uh, to consultants. And I have already shared contents of that because it's the same content that was sent to the contractors. Then, Mr. Chairman, I also have here letters written by the um, Northern Region, um, Northern, Northern Regional Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, signed Sule Sambia, authorization to allocate these projects to the following contractors. I have that also here on the letterhead of the New Patriotic Party, signed by the Regional Secretary. And it says, the above subject matters referred the regional party has decided to allocate this quota under IPEP projects to the following contractors. Nalirgu Gambaga, first to have the contractors. Me. Can I have that letter? Please? Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I will pass on the letters to you. And in, in these letters, the, the contracts under IPEP were supposed to have been shared by the regional executives of the party. And again, in the letters from the NDA, contractors were charged for the contracts that they executed. The, this authority operated under your supervision as minister responsible for the operations of these authorities. Did you sanction these operations at those authorities? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I was the supervisory minister, but this never came into my attention. Honorable nominee, what do you know happened to the tricycles that got missing under the Northern Development Authority? What do you know about the tricycles that got missing under the Development Authority, Northern Development Authority? Honorable, the question is, some bicycles were on the tricycles were missing at the Northern Development Authority. What do you know about them? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the CEO reported to me. But as he rightly read the letter to the police commander for investigation, I still not received any report from the police through the CEO that I'm aware that such a thing has happened. Uh, Chairman, uh, Honorable uh, Minister nominee, there were pictures of tricycles 
which tricycles were under the Northern Development Authority. That got missing, or better still, as you put it, stolen, which led to the resignation of Dr. Majid Haruna as Chief Executive of the Northern Development Authority. Are you aware that the matter is being investigated? And what did you do as minister to follow up for the loss of those public goods? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I mentioned, yes, it was reported to me. So I also set up a committee. But because the police was investigating it, they couldn't go on with the investigation, I mean the committee. So we're still waiting till Dr. Majid left office. And up to now, I don't have any report on that matter. Will you demand a report from the police? Will you demand from the police? And accordingly, if necessary, sanction appropriately in accordance with law for the loss of those goods. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, Honorable Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I will begin by revisiting the matter to do with uh, violence in Kasua and the reign of terror. The kindly, kindly allow me. Police investigations are not court processes. Please. Honourable member, when the, it so, is not spoken into the mic, ignore it, please. No, but it's really affecting us. Please, if we can. If, if we can conduct ourselves honorably, please. The nominee in response to the Honorable Minority Leader's question about your bodyguard, you indicated that, I hope the nominee is listening. You don't, I don't have your attention. Honorable Hawa Kumse, I am the one asking the question, not Obi Amwa. In your response to the Honorable Haruna Idrisu, you said that the shooting incident occurred at 6 a.m. at the polling station. I've received numerous messages from your constituents who contest that, who say that it was 9.15 a.m. at the Step to Christ polling center, and that over 300 of them were in the queue at the time the shooting incident took place. How do you reconcile that? I'm waiting for the response, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm surprised the person is telling you it was around 9 a.m. I've answered that he asked, where was my bodyguard? I said, as at the time I left the house, it was around 6 a.m. She had then not reported for duty. So definitely, I wouldn't leave my home 6 a.m. and get to the police center at 6 a.m. It wasn't 9 a.m. It was between 6 to 30 a.m. Not nine a.m. Thank you. Honorable nominee, do you know this gentleman? Is this picture familiar to you? Uh, Honorable Blocker, just seek chairman's permission and then do that so that the process is well regulated. You indulge, Chairman. Yeah, yeah, leader. Because, Soon after she has looked at uh, the because the nominee bring... asked for it, that's why. But I, I'm willing and to let colleagues, you go to the Colleagues, chair. colleagues, many of these would request that at least chair and the clerk has copies beforehand. So we we'll decide collectively. But on us, we kindly bring it to Chairman's attention after she's looked at it. So let me apply that, uh, leader. I'll be making copies available to the chairman and the clerk. Including the videos that we show, we just keep leadership and the clerk office ahead of time. Thank you.
Yeah, Honorable Nominee, we are waiting if you know the gentleman, the picture before you. Yes, Honorable, do you know him? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I know him. So, the, you, you know him as, who is he to you? He is my brother. So, you do know about the 1st January 2021 attack on Amadou Tuareg, the NDC constituency secretary for Ewutu Senya East, which uh, he led. And uh, I have photos of uh, the assault, the bloody assault, and uh, Honorable, his hospitalization. Honorable, I'll make all of that available to you. You, you deliberately introduce matters which are not before us. No. It does not relate to the, uh, the nominee. It relates to the nominee. It relates first, to the nominee. You've asked her whether he's aware of an attack on somebody. Yes, the first And then January, you start, you continue with the commentary, introducing matters which are not before us. Please, answer the question. First Do you know about attack. the attack of, uh, is that who, NDC Amadou Secretary? Tuarik, NDC Amadou Tuarik, NDC Constituency Secretary, who is still hospitalized. You, you know about that attack? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know which attack he's talking about. Mm. Please, I didn't hear you. I don't know of the attack you have mentioned. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I will be making copies of all of this available, and I hope the nominee will be reminded that she is under oath, because I have videos that she was in the company of this gentleman. But, Mr. Chairman, let me move to my second question. That's your second question. That's your fourth question. No. I that's expect, your fourth question. No, the then. first question was about no, but that's your fourth question. violence Please and the proceed. reign of terror in Kaswa. My second question is a general news publication on Ghana Web of Wednesday, 17 July 2019. 1v1d. We are not constructing meaningful dams. Honorable Howard Kumsen, can you please explain what you meant by this statement, that the 1v1 days, they are not meaningful dams. Can you please explain? And Ghana Web attached a video of the interview. Yes, Honorable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, I've also read about it, but I must say that I was taken out of context. Thank you. So what is the context? Because Ghana Web attached the video and we hear you saying that. that no, we'll answer the last question from the nominee. What is the context? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, there was a question whether the dams we are constructing are that of the Akosombo Dam. And I said, no, we are constructing community air dams. And those dams are constructed within the community. So sure, we don't expect big dams. And Mr. Chairman, as we all know, so maybe the way I wanted to put it was well, I said uh, English is not our mother tongue. So what I really meant was not the word I used. But not to say that the, the dam was not a meaningful dam. Thank you. All right. Chairman, final question. Yes. No, My final. you are done. Yes. Oh, Chairman. Leadership here. No, is it nobody here? All right. Yes, there's nobody here. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Howard. Several questions have been asked relating to the shooting incident. You've said that it is under investigation, but you keep apologizing. 
is the apology and admission of guilt, or what are you apologizing about? Something that has not investigated. Please, you don't that, know the outcome. Can we ask another question? That is asking self incriminating questions. That is not an answer. Can we ask I, another I can hear question? You. I can hear you, sir. The question you ask, the answer you're expecting, is self incriminating. Are you admitting guilt? No, we can't do that. Ask another question, please, or put it in another way. So why don't you let her answer whether she is admitting guilt or not? The matter is pending. Yeah, but she keeps apologizing. So I want to draw her attention. Are you apologizing because you are admitting guilt, or why are you apologizing over a matter that you say is still an investigation, and so we should we should we should stay away from the matter? Her, her answer is on record, and I think for our purposes, her answer is sufficient. If you want to repeat her answer, let them say it for you. So that, but otherwise, I encourage you to ask another question, please. So you want to repeat the answer to me so that I can say it's on record. I, I had her apologizing and apologizing. So I'm like, what, you, you, the matter is still being investigated. We don't have the police report. Why are you apologizing? That's my simple question. Can I have some order, please? Can I have the other on my right? Yes, honorable, please proceed. Um, honorable Power, can you, can you take us through your achievements at the uh, Ministry of Special Development Initiatives? Yes, she wants, he wants your achievements at the Ministry of Presidential Special Initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we are all aware that this was a new ministry created by His Excellency Nana Redanko Akufuado, led by me. And so I led in the setting up of the ministry. And I also took to the establishment of the three development authorities. That is Coastal, Middle, and Northern Development Authorities. Mr. Chairman, as I mentioned earlier on, when the ministry was created, we had to start with the needs assessment in the various constituencies to wait for the appointment of the CEOs of the government authorities. So we did all this up to the whole of 2018, 2017. So 2018, they were appointed. But before then, we had also started with some work. That was um, construction of toilet facilities across the country construction of water systems across the country, and also construction Chama, Chama, of- Chama, across the country. Water systems. So we find your toilets and water systems the toilets, across yes, the please. country, not in selected areas in the country. Mr. Chairman, every constituency had its fair share of the project. So that's why I'm referring that, yeah. And, and also, we also led the construction of a one district, one warehouse. And one of the projects that I did and gladdened my heart was the procurement of the ambulance, 307 ambulances for one constituency one ambulance. And the another one was the procurement of the 10,000 hospital beds for various hospitals in the country to ease the no bed syndrome in the system. So basically in the ministry, this, is what, this was what I did as the ministry. And then as I mentioned with the development authorities, 
they also continued from where I left to do constituency need projects in all over the country, I mean, the constituencies that were needed. So that was my achievement. Okay, just a follow-up. So, Honorable Howard Compton, from this explanation you just gave me, it means that unlike it is being held publicly that you were imposing projects in the various constituencies, you were doing based on need assessment, going on what they need, and then making sure that they get it. That, that's exactly what you did, correct? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We did the needs assessment, as I mentioned. But these projects that I've mentioned are government priority projects. We had to approach for our projects. That is bottom-up approach, which is from the constituency, and top-down approach, the government priority projects. So the ministry executed that of the government priority project. Thank you. These are all needs assessments, yeah. Uh, the, the construction of the toilets, the water systems, uh, warehouses, and etc. Were these uh, procurements done by the special development authorities, or they were done centrally from your, your, your ministry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The procurement was done under my ministry, under the ministry. The procurements were centralized. So the, the toilets were procured from Accra. Yes. Um, my last question has to do with uh, the ministry that you are going to. Um, the president in 2017 promised to assist procure a research vessel. I'm told the research vessel is not yet procured, so it incapacitates um, the sector and research institutions in terms of carrying out research into aquaculture, the marine environment, and its ecosystems, and etc. cetera. Uh, what assurance, assuming that you are given the nod by this house, what assurance are you given that within a very short period when you get there, the research vessel will be procured? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll do my findings and consult the appropriate quarters, then we take up the process. Thank you. All right, leadership. If you don't show any that you want to go, I will not know very well. Let me speak with uh, Gisela, is that right? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee. Yeah. Sorry? What's your problem? Please ignore him and address me. Please. What would you do to ensure FICO is minimized or stopped? Because it's estimated that over two, almost two, two million people depend on the inshore fishing industry for a living. My question again is, what would you do to ensure that FICO fishing is minimized or stopped? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will enforce the law. Thank you. Honorable Leader, please. Mr. Chair, I have a second question. Mr. Chairman, the nominee, we share a border, but kindly let us do a professional job in this house and ask the colleagues on the other side to please bear with us. Thank you. My second question is, fish feed takes up about 70% of the cost of production in, aquaculture, in the aquaculture sector in Ghana. 
What will she do to help feed mill companies who have been advocating for tax waivers on fish feed raw materials imported into their country? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, when I get the nod, again, I will consult the stakeholders who are involved to see how best we can reduce the cost of the fish processing. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So first, I want to ask the honorable nominee, what are the three main crop sectors within the fishing industry in Ghana? The three main sub-sectors within the fishing industry in Ghana. The fishing industry, the, the three main sub-sectors. Yes, an old man. Yes, Honorable. Honorable nominee, we are, we are listening to you. Ignore them both sides of the house and address me, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I don't understand the question very well, so it's very difficult for me to answer it. No, 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 but can you break it down for her for me, please? Unfortunately for me, I don't know how to <laughs> rephrase this question. We've got very simple, very well. straightforward Sub questions. Subsectors. Yes. If you take the whole fishing industry, <laughs> which <laughs> sectors are identifiable with whether it's what you call a marine subject. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I'm verifying. That's not fair. That's not fair. I'm verifying. Mr. Chairman, that's not fair. Mr. Chairman, that's not fair. What are the three subject branches you can... Mr. Find? Chairman, I said I didn't understand the question. Just I wanted just to be now. sure of what he was talking about. Yes. Now, yes. So what are the three main subsectors within the fishing industry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have the marine sector, aquaculture, and then the inland. Inland sector. Okay, my second question. Um, Ghanaians have complained a lot about the penetration of Chinese into uh, retail, mining, and other sectors of the economy. Are you aware of the length of Chinese penetration in our fishing industry? And before that, will you by chance, heard of the number of Chinese trawlers on our seas? Honorable first, are you aware of the <laughs> Chinese, uh, numbers of Chinese, uh, the Chinese invasion of our shipping? Are you aware? That's the first one. No, Mr. Chairman, I'm not aware of that. Uh, yes, the, 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 the number of trawlers, you, the number of trawlers, big fishing vessels that are on the seas, I, do you know the number? Mr. Chairman, I'm told there are between 80 to 100 trawlers on the sea. I'm not very sure, but that's the information I got. But I don't know their owners. 
Mr. Chairman, this uh, work is also to help the nominees when they are approved to do better at the sector. So if you allow me, she has mentioned about 80. I have with me here the list of number of Chinese toilets within our fishing industry. I, I, I will give, Mr. Chairman, I'm just I'm saying that it's to help her in case she's approved. Here, two types of waybills that are issued to the trawlers when they catch fish. One is the official Ghanaian waybill, and one, the other one is the unofficial Chinese waybill. So we have a Ghanaian waybill and a Chinese waybill where the quantity of the catch is virtually under invoice on the Ghanaian waybill, but specified correctly on the Chinese waybill, so that they will elude paying the proper customs and fines to Ghana government whilst they pay the right one to the Chinese court. I will give it to you. I have with here too a specimen contract that they enter into with Ghanaian fishermen in what they call transshipment. When they catch the fish on the high seas, instead of bringing it down for it to be properly accounted for, they sell the fish to fishermen illegally on the high seas. And they sign contracts with them. So, Mr. Chairman, I will hand those things over to her. That is very good but information go that will assist her no. if she becomes a minister. Yeah, I will go for my second question. Right. Can we? Because this one is just to assist her. <laughs> How many regions in Ghana do we do artisanal fishing? Oh. <laughs> and, and within that sector, just give me four names. Nee, you're, you're, you're compounding the question, then uh, my second question and my third question. Can you let her answer the first one, then you can. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I'm right, there are four regions. And if not, when I get there, I'll find out and get back to you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, she said four regions. Can she mention the four regions for me, please? She said four regions. So I will want to know the four regions. The four regions, if you mention them for me. Will you mention the four regions for me? I know of the Volta region, Greater Accra region, Central region, and Western region. Do we do fishing in the Eastern region? No, no, you have, you have exceeded your, your oh, level. Oh, Chairman, it's you on the same much. question, the follow-up for the same question. Thank you very much. You've had enough. enough. No, Chairman, because we do yes. fishing as even in your own city. In your, in your region, Honorable, we do fishing. Honorable uh, Minority Chief Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, in an answer to an earlier question about the shooting, she she apologized and she said the matter was before the police, so details of it could not be discussed. Okay, I just wanted to find out from her whether she was aware that a number of her constituents got hurt. Some lost some of their property. Oh, okay, you couldn't hear me. I'm saying that during that particular incident, a number of your constituents got injured. Others got their property damaged in motorbikes and shops, bullet foot, uh, bullets hitting their uh, kiosks and other things. Are you aware that this happened to some of your constituents? Mr. Chairman, I don't know which of the incidents he's actually talking about. I'm talking about the very one that you said was happening around 6 a.m. That you are aware that some of your concerns got injured, some got their property uh, destroyed. Whether you were aware? Mr. Chairman, I'm not aware. As I already alluded that the case is under investigation and I don't have any reports in my hand. 
So after the incident, did you follow the news item that showed some of the young guys injured with blood all over them? Some of the women that were saying that uh, there, there were bullets that hit their cures. You never followed those stories. Well, I heard about, I, I read the stories, but I never heard about people being injured and blood flowing here and there. I never heard about that. So, uh, you mean to say, as the MP for the area, when persons have been injured as a result of the fracas that happened at the polling station or near the polling station, as an MP, you never took pain to find out whether some people were injured and whether some properties were destroyed. You never did that. Mr. Chairman, I will want to create this impression here that I gave a warning shot in the air. It was not directed to anybody on that day. Thank you. No, but did you hear that any people have been injured or properties damaged on that day? Like I said, no. Yes, sir. Yes, you might have fired in the air, but you know that it resulted in people running helter skelter. And even some of the EC materials got destroyed because people were running up and down, and therefore people got injured. You never heard these stories. You never followed up to see whether these were true. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mentioned that the incident was out of the pooling center. The pooling center was in the compound, in the house. And the incident happened outside of the compound. So I didn't see whatever happened in the compound. And you didn't find out later what happened to individuals from your constituency. You see, I'm asking all this to be able to help me tell whether your apology is sincere. We are all MPs. Incidents do happen in our constituents, sometimes supporters of even your opponents. But you hear people are in there, you try to go and visit them, try to comfort them, to let them know that it was not deliberate. So when you apologize, then people will not believe that your apology is sincere. But if something of this nature happened in your constituency, with all the news around it, you never find it necessary to find out those who were injured and to visit them, and you come to our appointment from you say, oh, you are sorry. You make it difficult for me to believe the sincerity of the apology. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the best of my knowledge, nobody was injured that day. To the best of my knowledge. Okay, it never came to my notice that day. Mr. Chairman, I will just continue. In Ghana, one of the major challenges that we have is inadequate biosecurity measures. When I talk about biosecurity measures, I'm talking about our ability as a country to protect our borders from persons coming into our country with other organ, of organs, whether plants, animal, fish, and what have you. So because of this, our borders is led to smuggling of unauthorized frames into our aquaculture sector. This has led to outbreak of diseases on farms in some instances. What will you do as incoming minister to avert some of this illegal introduction of unapproved fish strains into the aquaculture sector? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will want to assure the House that I will work with appropriate agencies to make sure that we enforce the law by bringing sanity in the sector. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, equally, the aquaculture, the aquaculture sector has no fish laboratory. As a country, we do not have any laboratory that does diagnosis and assist fish farmers 
in maintaining their farms. What will she do to change this situation? Please, did you say the question again? A laboratory. There's the whole industry. There's no laboratory to assist those who want to trade in or do business or the farm in fishing. What is your plan in that respect as a minister? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When giving the nod, we, will, we have the research already there. So all is to make sure that we help to put up the necessary offices to run all these tests. Where, the are, the, where are the researchers? Mr. Chairman, I've read that we have fish researchers in the system. But when I get to the ministry... Can, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, is that, is that where they are? Are they, the researchers, are they at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research? Here yeah, they are. They are the Fisheries Commission. Okay, the Fisheries Commission. Very well. Yes. Mr. Chairman, as much as you may want to assist the family, I was talking about laboratory. Because in the aqua sector, aquaculture sector, you need a fish laboratory to, do, to assist them in doing so many things. And for a very long period of time, as you may agree in your earlier answer, our fish eating far exceeds even meat and poultry, meaning that the fish industry is a very viable one. But we do not have laboratory. And I'm saying that when given this nod, what will you do to change this situation of lack of fish laboratory to assist the aquaculture sector? That's the question. Mr. Chairman, that's what I said that in collaboration with the Fisheries Commission and other agencies that are responsible, we will enhance or enforce on this um, research activities on the fishing. Mr. Chairman, let me just go back to her old place when she was under the when she was the Minister for Special Initiatives. She said in an earlier answer that the target that is set to achieve has been achieved. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Chairman. What was the target for the warehousing flagship program that you target to achieve? The warehouses. Yeah, the warehouses. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We targeted to build 50 warehouses. And as I speak, 42 are fully completed, and eight are between 80 to 90 completion. As at um, somewhere October, that I got the report from the consultant. So I just want to find out, this 42 that she's saying is completed, where are some of them located? Yeah, where are some of them located? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we have one at Sandama, two in Tamale, I don't know whether it's south or central, but in Tamale. We also have two in uh, Techimai. Then we go to the western region, both western north and western region. Um, eight are completed there. In western region? Yes. So that is a Bia. East or west, the, the last part of Bia, not where a champon is, a honorable champon is, but the other constituency. That one is completed. Bia West, thank you. And then we go to. Um... Yeah, so at least you mentioned some of them. So, for example, the one in Bia West, what was it meant to store? Mr. Chairman, the warehouses were constructed in collaboration with the Agri Ministry and Buffer Stock. So when the request was made, we were asked to take the, the, the project. 
I, I don't dispute that. But I wanted to know, because for example, if the one that you may say in a draft, maybe it may not have been constructed to assist the maize farming. Maybe in Kranza is for maize farming. Maybe the one in Sandima is for something. I'm saying that the one in Biawe, what was it meant for, for storage? What were, were the targets for storage? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For grace and cocoa beans. So, Mr. Chairman, I want to find out from here, with regards to the one million per constituency, how much of the target have you achieved? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have achieved close to 70-80%. So did your constituency receive $4 million? Mr. Chairman, I didn't say we received, we, we have achieved 100%. I said 70 to 80%. So how much did your constituency receive out of the $4 million? Mr. Chairman, I can't not tell the exact amount that was given to your constituency because it depends I'm on... I'm talking about my constituency because that may be, I may admit, that may be difficult for you to be able to hear, tell how much Tamale uh, Nob got or Aswansi got. But I'm talking about your constituency because that will help us to be able to, to see this target that you are talking about, its achievement. You mean my constituency? I will cross-check, but I'm not sure my constituency got more than $2 million. So was it in project or in cash? It was in project, Mr. Chairman. What are some of the projects that were taking place in your constituency in respect of this about $2 million that you are talking about? Mr. Chairman, the constituency needed one warehouse that I just mentioned because there is market there, and they bring in grains. So we have, which is yet to be completed. It's one of the, between 70, 80 that I mentioned. We also got road construction, and then two school buildings. So are you saying that uh, the, the special initiative was also embarking on road construction? Mr. Chairman, the purpose for special government initiative was to bridge the gap in development. That is why we said we took needs assessment. So the needs in your constituency are the projects that you request for. They need to be done. Thank you. So in your, in your case, part of it was this in construction of roads. I say in your case, in your case of your constituency, Part of it was used in construction of the road. Yes, Mr. Chairman, because we have bad roads in our constituency. Mr. Chairman, with regards to the dam that uh, some people have described as dugout, how many villages, because you have uh, conflicting figures, we intend to do every village will have a dam. So, no, we didn't say, or oh, some say, oh, we targeted to do 500. Some say, oh, no, that's not what we did. You being in charge, how many villages did you target to construct this, whether dug out or dam? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The one village, one dam, was not to give every village within the four years, because the number of villages in the three or five northern regions if I'm not mistaken, are more than 5,000. So there was no way we could finish constructing over the 5,000 dams within the four years. But we targeted it that we were going to give every constituency in the five northern regions 10 dams for the start. And that was what we did. And so in total, how many were, were, were the targets? for the 10 per constituency in the, uh, the five regions of the north? Mr. Chairman, there were 560 because one constituency had no 
site for was was well could not be constructed with a dam in the north. The target was 560. How many were you able to construct? We have been able to construct, Mr. Chairman, 400 and. If you don't have it really, maybe you could provide Yeah, it. we constructed um, about 470, but we have the active ones, the active ones to be 400 and four, 450 something, yeah. Four, you said you had about 470 constructed, but the active ones are about four, are about 400. Honorable, when you say active ones, what do you mean? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, when I say active ones, those that are being used because we had issues with some of them that were constructed. Thank you. So these are about 400 to 450 that you are talking that are active. Are they able to reserve water throughout the dry season? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I have the number here. 471 active sites. And then we have 427 fully completed. We also came up with some corrections that was not part of the initial construction. That is a stone pitching around the embankment. And as we speak, we've done about 170. Those that have been reported to me before we went for election, it was 170, yeah. Mr. Chairman, so I was asking whether these active ones of about 427, as we just stated, are able to, re are able to retain water throughout the dry season? Yes, Mr. Chairman. That for sure, is that the report that you got that they're able to retain water throughout the dry season? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I will take to the ambulance. I, in an earlier answer to your question, you said the ambulances that were supplied were 370. Is that, am I right? I said 307. 307. Which companies supply this ambulance? Mr. Chairman, the ambulances were supplied by five, is it five or seven different companies, yeah. Is it five or six different companies? Okay, between five and six companies. Do you? Six different companies. Do you remember any of the companies' names? The, comp the companies that did the supply, do you remember any of them, their names? No, please. No, please. You don't remember any of them, their names? It's um, any of them, I said you don't remember any of them, their names. You don't? The company that did the supply. I think I can remember one or two. Uh, uh, what's the name? I think one is um, Luxury. And then the other one is Christine Hill something. Well, were the ambulances, which branch were they? The ambulance, which branch were they? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. They are banks. All, all the 307 are banks? Yes, please, all the 307. So these suppliers, are they authorized dealers of banks in Ghana? Any of them, the authorized dealer of banks in Ghana? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Which one, of, which of them do you know is an authorized dealer of vents in Ghana?
does any of them have the authority to be the ones selling and servicing Mercedes Benz in Ghana? Mr. Chairman, I know Luxury for sure sells different types of cars, but I don't know whether he's an authorized dealer. So, do you remember the cost per ambulance? Yes, Mr. Chairman. From the production to the distribution point with the insurance, it all costs us around the 177,000. Come again. It's $177,000. About I have about 177,000 US dollars per, per, per ambulance with insurance and everything. Why didn't you buy from an authorized dealer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, when the tender was open, PPA emphasized on authorized dealer's authorization permit, which they produced. They produced it, and that is why we allowed them to. So you are saying that uh, the six companies produce authorized uh, dealer's authorization. Dealer's, dealer's authorization. That, that the authorized, uh, those that have been authorized have given them the go-ahead to procure. Yes, please. Is that what you are saying? And can you finish this committee with copies of such letters? At the appropriate time. No, not, uh, can you provide us with copies of those letters? When you say at the appropriate time, yes, so that you can provide it. But when it's appropriate time, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll provide them when. Okay. Mr. Chairman, loans in Ghana are very expensive. When you walk to any bank, procure a loan for any business is very expensive. So because of that, government, for those of us in crops, get subsidized tractors. Would you consider government intervention, just like the tractor program, to be able to support fish farmers who want to own their own vessels? Yes, Mr. Chairman. What, what, how do you intend to do that? Mr. Chairman, through the Agri Development Bank and um, soft loans, we will support the fishermen. Apart from that, in collaboration with private sector, we will have to get the fish at the moderate cost, at the fish feed at the moderate cost, if I got the question very well. Mr. Chairman, the fishing sectors require clear deer management regime. Ghana has not yet got a single deer expert. There's no also deer laboratory. None of our university or technical university Universities teach gear development. Yet 90% of our fishery challenges can be traced to wrong gears. What would she do about this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will enforce the law of using the right gear for fishing. Come again. I didn't get the answer. I didn't get the answer. The question is, Ghana does not have a company that manufactures any of the things they use in pharma. Is that right? That's what you call gear. Any of the things they use to farm, like the nets, the trawlers, or any of the things, how do you plan to assist? and ensuring that any of these come. Mr. Chairman, that's what I said, that we will collaborate with our Greek Development Bank to get them, because they are 
dealing with the farmers. Apart from that, we also enforce the law. That is, if we are able to assist them to get the right gear for the fishing, then we enforce the law for them to use. Some of them actually have it. But because they think when they use the unauthorized one, they will have all kinds of fishing. That is why there is enforcing the law will also help us. When we talk about the gear, we're talking about the fishing nets. We're talking about the net. So the president promised to acquire a research vessel for Ghana when he spoke in Tema in August 2017. Unfortunately, to date, we do not have a research vessel. Will you remind the president, and what will you do to ensure that we get a research vessel in, to support the aquaculture sector. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will remind the president. Come again. I will remind the president. You will remind the president. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there are a number of cool stores that were started during the tenure of uh, Honorable Shelley IT as the Minister for Fisheries. Unfortunately, many of them that have been built across regions have not been completed and they are now standing as white elephants. What will you do about these cool stores that are dotted all around and idle? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, when giving the nod, I will go around to find out what their problems are and we will revive those that have become white elephants and why those who have been started, those that have been started are not completed, then we will complete them immediately. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, lastly, about the development authorities. The development authorities, they, 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 they work under you, right? Mm -hmm. And you supervise the activities. You supervise the activities of the development authorities. And there are three of them, right? So you pay attention to publication with regards to them, right? You don't put the mic, so I don't hear your answer. Yes, Mr. Chairman. You know Samuel Atta Mensah, popularly known Simmons. Yes, Simmons. Yes, I do know him. You remember his resignation? Yes, I do. And did you follow the accusation or the allegation that he leveled during his resignation? No, Mr. Chairman, because he just wrote a letter through me to the president. But I didn't follow after the letter that was made to me. One of the accusations was that there was lack of teamwork from you. Was that right? I'm not sure of what he says. Really. And then the other was that you wanted to be the leader of every procurement. Is that also right? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think um, that is not true. So because do you know the authority has their budgets, all right. So I don't even tell them how to go about with their do you procurement. use the development authorities' procurement to satisfy party, constituency party, executives? No, Mr. Chairman. As I said, I'm not part of the uh, entity tender committee, and I don't also give that directly. It has never come to your notice that this is happening in any of the development authorities? Never. Do you know Dr. Al-Hassan Suleymana Anamzoya? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Who is he? Mr. Chairman, he's one of the CEOs for the Development Authority. That is for the which, Northern which, Development Authority. The Northern Development Authority. Are you aware that the officially right to demand 10% for every contract? No, Mr. Chairman. So you just answered those questions. I wanted to find out whether that has ever come to your attention. No, Mr. Chairman. So if I provide you with letters that he has written, will that aid you to ensure that 
that is investigated. What is her authority now? She's left that ministry. Okay. She's not in a new ministry yet. Right. Oh, are you the one, the president? She said the president representative. Yeah. Representative of the ministry. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm the red Okay, owner. right then. So until she's approved by this committee and sworn in, she's still the representative of the president in that ministry. And I'm saying that if those letters are forwarded to her, we should ensure that it's investigated. Mr. Chairman, I mentioned that earlier on. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I will provide the letters that shows the, the demand for the 10% signed by him to the consultant. And the letters that were used to, to share projects to constituencies from Yoyo uh, constituency, their share. You have Nalurgu and Gambaga constituency, their share. You have Chiripodi constituency, Yagaba, Kabore constituency, Wale Wale. And, and Napanduri constituency, the way they say, I will hand over all this to you. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Honorable Nomini, um, congratulations. Let me plead that you give me concise and precise answers. Um, my first question has to do with the fish feed, which I'm sure you know impacts hugely on the cost of rearing and production. Uh, I know you to be somebody who reaches out to other ministries and colleagues and other industry players relevant. Would you consider reaching out to the finance ministry to ultimately ensure that the waiver is brought to parliament for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will do that. Um, I'm sure you are aware of a number of interventions by the European Union in Ghana. Uh, one of them, which I think my colleague was trying to allude to, is your support for the building of laboratories in the sub-region in terms of fish rearing. Um, would you also consider some collaboration with the European Union in Ghana in leaving a good legacy in that industry? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would. Finally, would you want to share your vision for the industry? for the industry. Yes, Mr. Chairman. My vision for the industry is to prove on the aquaculture sector and also inland fishing. That is one of my vision. Mr. Chairman, I will also will be glad to support the fisher folks, especially the women, to be able to have the to enhance their work in the sector. Thank you. You're done. Very well. Yes, let me do that. Um, how are, let me say congratulations. Um, you and I have been on this path for over 15 years. You are a very shy looking person. You don't like to be seen in public talking. It was difficult to convince you to be a woman organizer and even to be a candidate. And I must say, you're being here for the second time upon 
nomination by Mr. President is something that should inspire women. Because knowing you, you don't want to be sticking through such a growth. But you've endured it. You like to work in the background. Congratulations once again for achieving this feat. Let me quickly draw your attention to the point you made on aquaculture. Our major problem is Galamse. And it affects our water bodies. And you know that aquaculture means relying on our water bodies. How do you hope to ensure a strong advocacy to enable you achieve this? Since Galamse is still a big problem in this country and has taken a partisan political trend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will, we will do stakeholders' consultation in all the appropriate areas to let them know the bad effects on the galancy on our water bodies. Thank you. Um, and I also want to commend you highly for your apology regarding the incident in your constituency. But in 2012, we had to come and rescue you at the collation center. Some young men nearly attacked you. The police arrested them when we had to get your collation done. Do you know whether these gentlemen were ever prosecuted and whether the machete and the other offensive weapons, the police from them, were exhibits in court. Can you tell us what you know about that case after that rescue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, those culprits were arrested, but I never got any official reports from the police. Thank you. You are not sure whether they, those boys were ever prosecuted at all? Yes, I'm not sure. Okay. Mr. Chair, with respect, I thank you so much. That would be all for me. Yes, I will. Chairman, thank you very much. I appreciate that the nominee is a woman and note further that there is underrepresentation of women in public life. But for the record, under Minister Shari Aite at Fisheries, the University of Cape Coast established a fisheries laboratory, so be informed adequately about it, and not to state that there is no fishing uh, laboratory in the country. There is, and should you get the nomination, you would need to visit it and strengthen it in terms of the work that it will do. Now, Minister, there is report of pirates attacking vessels in our waters, particularly those who fish tuna. And I've seen some correspondence of some Koreans even threatening to leave our water shores because of those threats. When you come in, will you protect our vessels in the waters in collaboration with the security agency? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will. And then the Honorable Suhini raised it, and we need assurances from you as minister, because you were supervising minister of SADA, which was transformed into the Northern Development Authority, that some party activists in Tamil raided the offices of the Northern Development Authority, took away those tricycles, which, which led to the resignation of Dr. Majid Haruna as Chief Executive of Northern Development Authority. You see, the most painful thing, Chair, in this country is convicting the innocent. 
Probably Dr. Majid Haruna and his family have their reputation in tatters, yet they are innocent. Somebody in the name of the party probably is responsible for that loot. Will you assure this committee that you investigate the matter and ensure that those who undertook that criminal activity are punished? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will. And why has it taken you so long as minister not to have followed up because somebody had to resign on principle that, look, I am not aware of this. I did not sanction this. Yet he has suffered. And those who took the activity are walking free. How can we trust that as minister you have uphold the laws of Ghana? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I mentioned, the case is with the police. And so until the investigations are done, I cannot take any action. Thank you. It's taken too long, more than a year. You just can't leave it in the hands of the police. As minister, that is public money that was used, and you should be interested in that. Now, Chairman, that leads me to, you had come to Parliament for a budget of 800000 to set up a website. Was that done? What is the website address? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity once again to explain myself to Ghanaians. Mr. Chairman, that was a mistake. It was a typo error. The correct amount for the website was 80,000 Ghana CD. It was 80,000 Ghana CD. And we have since corrected the 80,000. Did you ask the Minister for Finance to correct it? Because we read this in a budget statement. And the 80,000, who did you procure to undertake the activity? Can you remember? Mr. Which Chairman, company? we did not even do the activity. The activity was not executed until 2019. And that time, the 80,000 was for the, development of the three development authorities and the ministry. But since the development authorities were established and they were on their own, the ministry did one on its own, which caused us 25,000 Ghana CD. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable Muntaka referred to it. Some men, he has reputation, he loves his country. He plays other role as uh, chief executive, as I may describe him for city, uh, the radio and television. And in principle, he abhors what you call political or ministerial interference in the work of an authority. He had to resign. Did you follow up to appreciate why he had to resign on principle? Because he could not condone wrongdoing? Mr. Chairman, thank you. I think the issue with the former CEO was that not only the former CEOs, I would say largely most Ghanaians, thought the one million per constituency was money that was given to me in account. But this was a budget, and we all know how budget is being done in the country and allocation, even releases. When you are told that you, are, you have your release, it's a different thing altogether. Mr. Chairman, so when they took office, they kept pushing for me to release money, and I said, well, there was no money with me. We got, we even, we, in fact, we even had a meeting at the Jubilee House, and they were directed to open an account with which controller will transfer their goods and services into the account for them. Lo and behold, when we had the meeting, he had not even opened the account. And so he was directed to go and do it. On Monday, the following Monday, he tendered in his resignation. So, you so I don't in, really know what the problem so was. So you didn't interfere in the day-to-day -day management and operations of the development authority, the three development authorities. Is that the case? Yes, please. I never did that. You didn't undertake procurement quietly behind the door on their behalf? Mr. Chairman, there was no way I could do that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Now, in an answer to your question, you were emphatic. Warehouses around, across the country were your wares. 
I'm holding your hand in Overnote. I've only seen 35 warehouses completed out of 50. Is that the case? No, Mr. Chairman. I know it's 42. As at the time, I, October, yeah, it was 42. And you constructed 1,010 seater water closets across the country? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Did you consult members of parliament before undertaking those projects in their constituencies? No, Mr. Chairman. Yet, in the MPP manifesto that you were supposed to execute, these were constituency specific projects, $1 million per constituency. You understand the $1 million times exchange rate and uh, Nana Akufuado 5.5, so 5 million Ghana cities per constituency times four years. We should have had 20 million spent in each of the 275 constituencies. You remember your first version, I asked you where you are going to get the money from. Cumulatively, how much over the four years have you gotten for the execution of the $1 million per constituency? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I earlier on mentioned that for the first year, the ministry was in preparatory activity, setting up the ministry and the Trade Development Authority until 2018, when the Trade Development Authorities came into operationalization. Mr. Chairman, so I will say that the one million per constituency was not started from the 2017 because the House approved for the one million per constituency, but it's not static tree, Mr. Chairman. So after every year, the money cannot be assessed or a new budget is made. So, so apart from apart from toilets, as you indicated, some uh, uh, fabrication of warehouses. What else did you do in the other constituencies? I'll refer you to an appendix in the budget for you to see some picture. But what else did you undertake? as Minister for Special Initiative. Please, I didn't get the question. Apart from boreholes and warehouses, what other projects did you undertake? Mr. Chairman, the boreholes, the warehouses, the ambulances, the 10,000 hospital beds were done directly under the Ministry of Special Development Initiative. But with the development authorities, they did different types of projects, school buildings, chase compounds, markets, police stations, and did you, did you undertake community clinics? Where? Community clinics. Did you undertake them? Community training. Clinics, clinics, hospitals, small hospitals. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we did the cheap compound Where? and also mini clinics. Where? Um, Mr. Chairman, I can't remember the. I no. know one at a. Uh, no, I can. Okay, so. Yeah, one at a, a can constituency. One, uh, I think, among from constituency. My constituency also gets one, got one. Uh, yeah. But that's all right. Uh, Chairman, with your indulgence, just name three villages or communities where you did dance and relate to the prizes that you procured those dance, dance for a record. If you have any official record, where did you construct a dam? What was the cost of the dam? Just mention three communities and the prices associated with it. And attempt to give an explanation of the price differentials. Mr. Chairman, I remember Garu, Timpani, Pusiga. How much did it cost, each of them? For the cost, I cannot specifically mention, Mr. Chairman, because it ranges between 200 to 250 Ghana CD. Will you make that available to this committee? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Minister, the record should be clean. 
200, 300, 250 Ghana cities or 1,000 Ghana cities? 200,000 uh -huh. to 250,000 Ghana cities. Yeah, so the maximum was 250,000 for a dam? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Did you visit some of them three, two months, six months after the construction? You followed a Joy FM expose on some of it, did you? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I did. Any lessons learned after you watch those videos from the media? Sorry? Did you learn any lessons when you read in the media about some of those dams? Yes, Mr. Fit? Chairman, we learned a lot of lessons, and that is why we are even adding up this uh, prefab, uh, reef wrapping on the embankment to make them stronger. I share the view of the president today, uh, kind of scrubbing the Ministry for Special Initiatives, because I don't see it in the president's uh, letter communicated to parliament. So it probably means that he's abandoning that Ministry of Special Initiative. Uh, this may not be your question, but we will be in some doubt. So which minister will now supervise the development authorities? You have an idea? No, but I'm sure it will be under the president. Uh, you think that there will be a minister under the president? We will see some minister for public enterprise. This is not for your answer. I'm just uh, communicating. We don't seem to accept that uh, uh, concept of public enterprises. Every ministry or department is a public enterprise. But I share the view that the number of ministries have been reduced, in particular yours, but the development authorities probably can run under local government. That is my suggestion. Now, uh, back to your popular uh, shooting case. You say that the police are investigating it. Have you re Were you cautioned or charged in a statement? No, Mr. Chairman. No, thank you. And, uh, Chairman, I know that you when the Honorable Adalda requested for that uh, Lance's document, you we want you to put weight on it because we ourselves, we are doing an investigation as a committee, and therefore if she does have a copy of the Lance's, make it available to Chairman for our purposes because even the police, as an extension, sometimes they don't know that they are a state institution who help them in their investigation. I have noted that you have said that you were not cautioned or charged. Now back to your ministry and your handing uh, over notes uh, again. In the Upper West region, did you put up any dam? Yes, Mr. Chairman. How many that you can remember? Mr. Chairman, as I mentioned, each constituency is supposed to have 10. But I know that some has been done. I don't know the number. Which constituency was supposed to have 10 dams? Sorry? Upper East, Upper West, Northern region. Is that the case? Each constituency is supposed to have 10 dams. OK. That's interesting. So we'll follow through your performance on that. Did you do any in the, did you do any in the Upper East region, in the Volga, Sandema, Towers, uh, Zwarungu and Zebla, did you? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Now, this may sound personal. Were you born in Pusu, Nalung, in Bimbila, or in Sekendi? Were you born? I see your record, Sekendi. <laughs> Were you born in the Pus, 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 Puswa. Puswa, in the Bimbila constituency? I know one Father Abdullah, uh, who was serving in the police service, but I see your record, second day. Which one should we rely on? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was born in second day, but I'm a native of Puswa in the Bimbila constituency. But not born in Puswa? No, please. Okay, but you know when I mentioned the name uh, uh, Uncle Abdullah, it rings a bell in your head. You don't he need to my, respond He was to my it. father. <laughs> Okay, so it means that you should know that I have information. That's why I say that I'm, 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 I'm asking on this particular uh, 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 matter. 
Now, again, your ministry's uh, budget. Did you always satisfy minimum procurement requirement as minister? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Now, Chairman, I'm about ending. In the run-up to the election, we saw parliamentary candidates commissioning projects, like pick-up of projects. Yet, there were members of parliament on this side, I should think even some from the other side, who didn't have that benefit, but you could find uh, uh, in some constituency, a parliamentary candidate come and cut a swag and refer it as a project under your ministry. Uh, the Honorable Ayaga is raising his hand. I could also raise my hand. The Honorable Ayaga is raising his hand. You didn't find that discriminatory? Mr. Chairman, it never came to my notice. I'm not aware of that. So if you do find out that development authorities gave out some projects, to MPP parliamentary candidates. Is that right? So, Mr. Chairman, it tells you that I wasn't interfering in their work because they were doing it. <laughs> so, there were those doing it. <laughs> there were those giving out their contracts to parliamentary candidates. I didn't know what was happening. You didn't know? Yes, please. They didn't write to you. <laughs> no, please. So, if I bring a letter with lists of uh, candidates, you stand strongly that you didn't know about it. Yes, Mr. But we need to improve our governance. I mean, you could, that could be done for any member of parliament. But a parliamentary candidate, we question in what capacity were you doing that. Uh, I note that you have uh, apologized for those excesses of shooting. That is not honorable. That is not ministerial. And particularly so that you are a woman you should not be associated with those uh, extra uh, engagement of excitement with a gun. Chairman, on that note, I can only wish the nominee well, but will request for that additional information. I thank you, Chair. Honorable Howard Thompson. around our constituencies, many of us. Projects, one specific project started in the year. Have not completed small town water projects or mechanized boreholes. Boreholes, tank, overhead tank raised, tank on it, but to date, no mechanized, no water flowing through them. How does it so happen? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the contractors are paid based on the work done. So maybe they might have raised the certificate and then waiting for their payment. And the water system is supposed to be installed with uh, solar panels. So some of them are also trying to get the solar panels to install them for the water usage. So when should the people of people of Bibo Mem and my municipality expect that water will flow through there? Very soon, uh, Mr. Chairman. Very well. There were petitions, but all of them there were about matters on which you have answered questions already. So I think that violent tendencies, um, 80,000 to 800,000, you've answered them. Both of them are the same thing. So. One from Governance Watch Alliance, one, the other from Care for Free and Fair Elections Ghana. Around elections, always, always, some groups emerge and one such group brought the petition. But you have answered questions containing their petition already. So we thank you for attending upon the committee. So we thank you for attending upon the house to answer.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm so pleased. It's now that you can thank.